Hello all, this is my Star Trek Bestiary series where we look into the creatures... monsters? that exist in the Star Trek lore that wouldn't really fit into a cultural index. This time we're looking into the colossal creature encountered by the crew of Voyager in the Delta Quadrant, the Maw of Bliss, also known rather adequately as the Telepathic Pitcher Plant. This space-born creature shows no faster-than-light capability nor identifiable means of propulsion, leading to a myriad of questions as to how it arrived at its present location. It's unknown if it is a unique life form or if there are others that reproduce, but it's around 200,000 years old, putting its origin around the time of the early empires of Iconia and the dying technologies of the Tacon. Additionally, the being seems to have a physical presence, however it is cloaked in gaseous mists which shroud its true form, making its exact measurements hard to quantify by eye. The creature itself is over 2,000 kilometres wide, making it one of the largest Cosmozoans encountered by the Federation, but there are still bigger. The Moor's anatomy is also mostly unknown, but it is brimming with bioplasmic energy, which may be the cause of this misty effect around it. Alternatively, it could be the remains of its numerous meals reduced to a molecular level. Bioplasmic energy is a little vague, but it may refer to the living protoplasm that exists inside cells, or more generally just organic material. The energy detected probably just refers to the notion that it appears to be alive and organic, and as any living being, it needs to be nourished, and it does so by consuming spacefaring vessels. So. Interstellar travel in Trek has existed for much longer than simply watching the shows may suggest. There have been many ancient powers in the distant past that have risen and gone before Starfleet even existed, so it is entirely possible that this being evolved to feed off of starships. However, I imagine it's more likely that its original prey were other space-born lifeforms, and that its digestion process is simply efficient enough to reduce the hulls of spacecraft too. Although it is not very manoeuvrable, the danger of this being is in its neurogenic field, which extends millions of kilometres. This is the designation given to a powerful telepathic field when produced by either a single mind or collective, and the intensity of this field increased the closer you got to the moor. The neurogenic field serves two purposes. First off, it drew in prey for this leviathan, and secondly it made observers picture it as something else as a form of camouflage. The form on which it took was based on some strong desire that the crew had, something that would encourage those caught in its field to close in. The effect got stronger as the ship approached, to the point where the desire to reach the centre of this siren's call was consuming, and eventually you would pass out from the effect as you entered into its direct proximity. Then it could simply eat its meal in peace. Once into its digestive tract, it could focus its bioplasmic energy against the ship in lightning-like blasts that over time would blast the ship apart until it was a fine molecular dust. Incredibly, it could also consume antimatter without an issue, which seems a very unnatural trait for something evolved, so perhaps it really does specialise in digesting starships, or was even grown to do such. Also, its method of digestion does seem risky, as simply blasting apart the vessel could possibly result in things like a core breach, and I don't know if it would enjoy that, even if it can consume antimatter. It does have several weaknesses, however. In being that it is organic, in theory it could be harmed by something with enough firepower or mass behind it, but its sheer scale makes that unlikely. It also found certain energy forms to be unpalatable. I doubt it, it could really taste in any real sense, but an electrolytic burst would cause it to regurgitate its meal, releasing it from its illusionary grip. But its biggest hole is in its lure. It's that it can only project its neurogenic field en masse and appear as one thing to the entire crew. For this reason, it selects a strong shared desire but on a ship of hundreds of individuals, not everyone is going to share that same want, and thereby be suspicious of the situation. In order to combat this, the Moor of Bliss could alter sensor readings within the range of its neurogenic field, and gave no indication of its true state. As the intensity of the field increased with proximity, it could even begin to prod the enthralled crew to take actions to further its ploy. 
restraining those who could see through its facade and such. Although there were no readings of higher intelligence from scans of the beast, this sort of tailored ingenuity does suggest at a high level of sentience and even intelligence. So I have a theory, cause course I do. We see from another episode of Voyager that a neurogenic field is produced by a collection of minds and can create telepathic illusions, so what if the more really is just an instinctual creature, but the field it generates links to the minds of the crew. The field then takes on a life of its own, in effect, built on the collective subconsciousness of the enthralled. It is their desire to reach whatever the lure is that then does all the minute tailoring of the neurogenic field, and the creature wastes no energy on brain power, letting a sort of mass hysteria set into its prey. That would certainly add an even darker twist to its lure, and really hammer home the idea that it is your own collective drive that is leading you into this trap, more than anything than it itself is doing. The only mystery I have left is its origin. So what do you think? Natural evolution? Opportunistic predators that just happen to be able to consume antimatter and ships? Or an engineered creation? I've been Rick, and I'll see you next time for another law. What? Is that? It is. Oh, yes, Captain, I would love to go on an adventure. Stay right there, I'm on my way.